From prompting real-life conflicts and scandals to simply hindering their own health and well-being. A wide variety of wrestlers' total commitment to their craft has led to, well, chaos. So I am Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling and here are 10 wrestlers who took kayfabe way too seriously. Number 10, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho's 2012 run in WWE saw him portraying what essentially amounted to a heel troll character. From making light of CM Punk's familial issues to encouraging audiences to cheer for him only to bail before wrestling or cutting a promo, Y2J was on especially irritating form. One crowd that did not appreciate the future demo god's heat-seeking behavior were the fans in attendance for a Sao Paulo house show in May of that year though. In a bid to rile them up, Jericho snatched up a Brazilian flag and kicked it, almost prompting a riot in the process. The police in attendance then gave the rambunctious veteran two options, either apologize on the spot or spend the night in jail. In a desperate bid to cool the escalating tension, Jericho quickly broke character and kayfabe mid-match to apologize to the crowd. Desecrating the flag is an imprisonable crime in Brazil, and Jericho's commitment to playing a disrespectful villain almost cost him dearly. While the show went on without any further issue, Jericho was soon slapped with a 30-day suspension for his antics. Number 9, MJF. The salt of the earth's commitment to maintaining kayfabe beyond the ring has won him plenty of praise over the years. However, considering his obnoxious jerk persona, it's led to some rather unpleasant fan encounters as well. Earlier this year at Revolution, MJF retained the AEW World Championship in an instant classic Iron Man match with Brian Danielson. At one point though, the champ threw a drink at an infant fan, prompting a fresh wave of booze. Unfortunately, the cheap heat moment was not pre-planned, and the fans involved were less than pleased. The incident drew criticism within the wrestling sphere as well, with even longtime super heel Ric Flair dismissing it as a step too far. Fellow AEW star Scorpio Sky was also unimpressed, dissing the fans who thought MGF's actions were entertaining. Another incident occurred back in June too, when the Long Islander went to knock the hat off of a ringside fan and wound up doing considerably more damage, sending the fan's glasses flying. He may be our scumbag, but some could argue that perhaps Maxwell is taking his persona a little too far. Number 8, The Boogeyman. Former Tough Enough competitor Martin Wright put his absolute all into his long-awaited arrival on the main roster. Unfortunately, that arrival came at the grim, worms-laden cost of portraying The Boogeyman. Sporting red, black and occasionally yellow face paint, Wright would foam at the mouth, smash clocks over his head and gyrate bizarrely on his way to the ring. A key facet of the gross-out gimmick was the Boogeyman's penchant for snacking on worms. Dead set against fakery, Wright made munching on legit worms a staple of his gig, feasting on the slimy, limbless creatures on TV, pay-per-view and house show events. Those lucky fans. Also, after losing several of his bottom teeth during his stint in OVW, Booker T's biggest tormentor opted to not have them fixed. The logic was simple. Missing teeth would add to the overall creep factor of his new horror-inspired persona. Despite the ridiculous dedication to the character though, Wright never quite progressed past the undercar novelty act level. All those worms for nothing. Number 7, JBL. In 2004, longtime tag team wrestler Bradshaw was reborn as JBL, a true titan of cheap heat. Mercilessly dissing every town he visited, the arrogant Texan would have the crowds riled up before he even got to the actual angle he was working that week. Unfortunately, a trip to Munich saw him take the act a bit too far. Right in the midst of his first proper main event push, during a house show bout, Layfield did the unthinkable and threw up a Nazi salute, much to the horror of the German audience. In Germany, such behavior is considered a criminal act, something JBL quickly learned the hard way. At the time, he'd enjoyed a side gig working as a financial analyst for CNBC. In light of the backlash from the incident, however, the American news channel dropped the WWE star. On the bright side for Layfield, though, Fox News didn't seem all that fussed with his eyebrow-raising antics, and he went on to do financial analysis there soon after. WWE, who were badly starved of main eventers at the time, with Brock Lesnar and Goldberg gone and the likes of Kurt Angle and Shawn Michaels dealing with injury woes, moved full steam ahead with the JBL super push that came to dominate SmackDown all the way up to WrestleMania 21 the next year. Number 6, John Tenter. Arguably best known for that time he crushed Hulk Hogan's ribs in a heated post-WrestleMania 6 angle as Earthquake, John Tenter endured a litany of odd gimmick repackagings throughout his pro wrestling run. Originally a sumo wrestler, the gargantuan 
intenter's bicep tattoo of a tiger was covered up throughout his run in the sport. In Japan, tattoos are widely frowned upon thanks to their prevalence in Yakuza culture. Considering the difficulty Tenter's ink had caused him, surely he wouldn't go and do something silly like, say, getting a much larger tattoo done over it? Unfortunately, Tenter's inexplicable dedication to a new persona in WCW prompted him to do just that. In 1995, the behemoth was handed a new shark-themed character. You already know where this is going. And in a staggering show of commitment to being the shark, Tenter got in the tattoo chair for a total session time of 24 hours to have his tiger piece covered up with a far more sizable ocean predator. Considering the gimmick came and went quicker than an RKO out of nowhere, Tenter's efforts looked utterly ridiculous not long after they were first unveiled. Eating pinfalls like they were going out of style, the shark persona was a long, sad fall from the Canadian super heavyweight's brief run as a cartoon era beast. Number 5, Sabu. The 1994 edition of ECW's November to Remember event saw a potentially thrilling bout between Chris Benoit and Sabu get badly derailed. Seemingly going for a flapjack, Benoit threw the hardcore icon in the air, who proceeded to land directly on his head and neck in a grim contorted mess. The match was quickly stopped, with the injured Sabu being rushed out of the venue whilst Too Cold Scorpio was hurried in as a surprise replacement. Much like his legendary uncle the Sheik, Sabu was a big believer in committing to kayfabe to get his dangerous persona more over. Unfortunately, the gimmick required a lack of speaking on Sabu's part, making life especially difficult for the doctors who had to communicate with him at the hospital. Given his potentially broken neck, failing to break character was a life-threatening decision on the real-life Terry Brunk's part. Fortunately, Paul Heyman, who was managing Sabu on screen at the time, on top of his booking duties, was present to sort the fiasco out. Incredibly, despite the severity of the injury, Sabu was back in the ring just two weeks later, continuing to amaze and terrify audiences with his chaotic, high-flying style. Number 4, Umaga. Umaga's 06 monster push saw him dismantle everyone from legends like Ric Flair to two very unlucky members of the Jackass cast. Steve-O and Chris Pontius were enjoying a predictably goofy segment on Monday Night Raw when the Samoan bulldozer made his presence felt. The real-life Eddie Fatu's then new gimmick saw him don face paint and savagely plow through the opposition, crushing them with explosive Samoan drops and devastating top rope splashes. When the big man mauled the two pranksters, Steve-O selling left a lot to be desired. Essentially breaking kayfabe to enjoy a good laugh at the more adequately selling Pontius, the man with a tattoo of his own face on his back incurred the scarily real wrath of the Samoan star. Getting back in the ring, Umaga handed out a new, considerably less protected beatdown of the self-destructive entertainer until he finally stayed down and sold accordingly. Stiffly slamming Steve-O repeatedly, Umaga received an alarmed out-of-character plea from Jerry Lawler on commentary to ease up. Johnny Knoxville has since confirmed that the real-life Stephen Glover suffered a concussion from the mishap. Number 3, Hulk Hogan. During a 1985 episode of Hot Properties, Hulk Hogan made an appearance to promote the upcoming first WrestleMania. Also on the show was comedian Richard Belzer, who initially had a merry old time joking about with the then face of the WWF. The initially light-hearted segment collapsed into chaos when Hogan slapped a chokehold on Belzer. Shockingly, Hogan wrenched in the hold way too tight on the comedian. He was far thinner and smaller than the usual folks the Hulkster tussled with in the ring. Belzer turned pale and soon lost consciousness, collapsing on stage much to the horror of those watching. Hogan, who'd been on the receiving end of some jokes from Belzer on the broadcast, essentially dropped the comedian from the hold, leading to him bumping his head on the way down. In character for the show, the future NWO leader's alarming incidents here highlighted the fine line between scripted entertainment and real-life consequences. A legal battle raged between the pair, with them ultimately settling out of court in 1990. Number 2, Antonio Inoki. The likes of Jake Paul and KSI should count themselves lucky a menace like Inoki is not competing in their celebrity fights. When the New Japan founder squared off with the iconic Muhammad Ali in 1976, it was not all fun and games, but rather a grim showcase of Inoki's obsession with maintaining the realism and legitimacy of professional wrestling. Under the tutelage of catch wrestling legend Carl Gotch, Inoki went through a hellish training regimen for the bout. Ali, meanwhile, stepped into the ring in boxing gloves, showboating ahead of a match with a bizarre rule set that forbade his opponents from grappling, tackling, or throwing standing kicks. Inoki took to the mat and 
through kicks from the ground, badly hobbling the greatest over 15 punishing rounds of combat that left audiences worldwide scratching their heads. The Pura Rezu megastar later claimed that Ali and co expected a more performance oriented exhibition, whereas the architect of strong style was determined to keep it real. The damage done to Ali's legs was horrific though, with blood clots threatening a potential amputation. The notoriously harsh Anoki went on to pulverize others in the name of kayfabe, including the great Antonio the next year. He was beaten into a bloody unconscious heap after no selling and going off script. Bizarrely, the 21st century then saw the Ricky Dozen students set kayfabe alight, from inexplicably interrupting a match to punch a young Shinsuke Nakamura in the face, to calling off a bout in IGF because he just wasn't enjoying it. Number 1. David Schultz During a 1984 episode of ABC's 2020, famed TV host John Stossel questioned the legitimacy of professional wrestling. The problem was he questioned it in front of a fully in kayfabe David Schultz. Enraged by the audacity of being asked whether or not his craft was a work, Schultz slapped Stossel silly on camera. Both stiff shots from Schultz sent the reporter to the ground. The quick beating unsurprisingly garnered widespread controversy and coverage, with the Nashville-born grappler quickly coming under fire. Suspended from the ring by the New York State Athletic Commission for his actions, Schultz was quick to apologize. However, it was simply not enough in the court of public opinion, with Stossel complaining of hearing damage and nagging pains two months after the incident. Schultz was later cut completely from the WWF after a rumored altercation with Mr. T. Interestingly, Dr. D has denied the validity of the story, claiming he merely had a word with the Rocky Three star. Regardless, police were purportedly called in, and Schultz was later dropped from the promotion, having simply caused too many troublesome incidents. Curiously, Schultz has since claimed that his decision to stay in character and rough Stossel up came from none other than Vince McMahon himself. While the validity of his claims are debatable, it does confirm that it was indeed the attempted preservation of kayfabe, right at a time when the business was starting to get seriously exposed, that led to the Stossel blow up. And that's our list, no many other wrestlers who took kayfabe way too seriously. Well, let us know all about them in the comments section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. Also, if you like this sort of stuff, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right now is based on. I've been the Gareth from What Culture Wrestling. Cheers for checking out this very serious list today, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!